was approached by um, uh, a recruiter and uh, a, a gentleman I knew from McKenzie, and uh, he was usually pitching to me, you know, some job at Google or, or wherever as a next step. And uh, he, this one day he, 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 he contacted me and he said, I have a very, very off the beaten path kind of, you know, thing for you to kind of consider. And uh, it's in nonprofit healthcare. And it was so different that I w was intrigued. And so I, and he said, you have to meet this guy, Rod Hockman, who's the CEO of, of Providence. And so I met with Rod, and uh, he and his team had me at hello. And basically, um, what was really interesting to me was is that Rod uh, not only got, you know, hey, we need to learn about digital and consumer, but a lot of his, uh, his questions were about that second order condition, which is, how, tell me about disruption. Tell me about how, you know, in the past, how have you helped to Amazon to disrupt industries like publishing, D disrupt its own business with Kindle, you know, kind of uh, cannibalizing their physical books business. Tell me about that. And I thought that was incredibly uh, insightful. It's not about somebody knowing how to deal with consumers or digital. It's about how do you kind of change the business model. If you just kind of got rid of um, the word healthcare and just, you know, looked at the industry without kind of names and, you know, labels associated with it, and you're talking to an entrepreneur, uh, would you like to go after an industry where the incumbents uh, spend a lot of money on capital, uh, equipment, capital, you know, buildings, that kind of thing. So there's a huge fixed cost infrastructure. And they have very, very limited engagement with their consumers. Any, um, any, any technologist or entrepreneur with his or her salt would say that's an excellent opportunity for disruption because you know, the incumbents don't really have a relationship with their consumers. And, and they're, they're, they're also, you know, kind of making huge investments at the same time. So it's going to be hard for them to respond. And so, um, you know, when Rod asked me to kind of put my, my disruptor hat on, uh, if you will, and, you know, how would we kind of create a, a new value proposition with consumers, one of the things I said was, you know, we should, we should target, um, you know, the female between 25 and 35 who's mobile adopted, um, very, very kind of technology savvy, and is thinking about starting her, her family. And the reason why she's so important to us is she is going to uh, control 85% of the spend in healthcare going forward. And if we don't build uh, a health-related relationship with her that's continuous, what we call it at Amazon, the daily habit, you know, to where she's coming to us, and talking to us, and because we've got either great content, we've got services that she can use, you know, daily or weekly, or, or what, or some combination of that, then we're going to be vulnerable to somebody else doing that. And at the best case scenario, we they will charge us a rent for access to her going forward, and so that will dramatically change our economics. Best case, worst case, they'll build, you know, a pretty sizable healthcare system behind it, um, you know, over time by piecing together the different pieces and parts. Um, and so, you know, that's one area of, you know, it's ripe for disruption. The other area um, is, is, is chronic care. So there's a lot of, you know, big companies, uh, drugstore chains and technology companies and um, you name it, uh, certainly the health, the, the health insurance companies, looking at, you know, how can they disrupt basically the, um, uh, the model for taking care of, you know, chronic patients. We're actually building a software development team uh, led by a gentleman from Amazon. His name's Mark Long. He's the former CTO of Zinc's Health. And, uh, and it's a substantial development team. We'll be one of the best founded, you know, best funded startups in healthcare IT. Um, and, or resource, I should say. And then the third area is what I was talking about before, which is, you know, you have to create a ongoing, continuous relationship with that consumer between episodes of care. So we have a third team that is building um, uh, consumer businesses that are focused on health. And so, and that's led by another former Amazon uh, person named Mary Haggard. And she is looking at three different spaces. One is in moms and babies, which I've already talked about. So how do you create the relationship when, you know, the 25 to 35 year old female is first thinking about starting her family because she will control the healthcare spend going forward. 
chronic disease. So um, specifically, we're really focused on diabetes type 2. Uh, and then the third area is aging in place. So how do we uh, make sure that, you know, um, uh, you know, people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s stay independent for longer, right, in their own homes. The, the venture fund will bring in early stage entrepreneurs and set up pilots. We've got about 12 pilots now running simultaneously across the, the, um, the, the, the platform today. And what they'll do is, is pull in our experts from across the system and these, you know, these 12 pilots, they're working on problems we really, really care about and we think are huge you know, ROI opportunities, right? Um, and typically, these early stage companies, uh, you know, they have their solution plus or minus 20% of dead center as to where it needs to be. And we don't know where that is, and they certainly don't know where that is at the beginning, but as we go through these pilots, they start to refine their business models over time. We start to learn a lot and kind of you know, ease the way for them kind of uh, going forward. The other is in the consumer innovation group led by Mary, we're actually incubating these new startups within our own system for the idea that you know, once we become the reference customer for them, they can be resold to other um, health systems over time, right? Um, because they will help these other health systems you know, um, protect themselves from disintermediation and disruption. I can just kind of tell you our journey, which is we're thinking about how to get them online, period, right? So how to con get, convince our customers right now to get online with us and to engage with us um, on a consistent, ongoing basis. I mean, one of the things that I presented in a recent meeting with Rod and team was the difference between our monthly average user rate, um, so the amount of customers that come to us every single month <coughs> online, versus some of the big, you know, um, you know, health health portals like WebMD. And it is beyond orders of magnitude difference, right? And the reason is, it, and, and, and we're missing an opportunity. So the first thing I would do is I would think about, you know, how to get the, the fundamental basics going with your consumers. So how do you get them to engage with you online, get them to schedule online, get them to, you know, just provide that basic core functionality online. We're going a little bit different way because we want to control that user experience over time. Um, and we think that that's important. Uh, but I think that is the fundamental building block because uh, w once you've got them online, you can convince them to use other digital services that will make the care of them much, much better. Mm -hmm.